So normally we don't uh, collect the data from individual text boxes or individual controls in WPF or for that matter uh, in any of the application. So we don't actually involve each and every control from the UI uh, to uh, collect the control or to set the con uh, controls data even. So what is it that we normally do uh, for the purpose of logic what we do is uh, we can group the elements which represents some sort of entity. For example, if I'm trying to represent some person, I always have a person class and I will always have certain properties inside person. So, uh, specifically here, what I'm going to do is, I'll take one example. I'm going to write down one class in the current namespace itself. Let's call that class as employee. And let the employee have, as of now, let employee have, let's say, string name. That's a simple property that we can talk about. It's an auto property that we have declared. In case you are not familiar with auto property, what you can do is you can define a typical private member, like let's say employee's name and a property to act against it. So we have a private member and we have a property which is going to be getter and setter right now. We are not doing any of the manipulation or uh, maybe data validation. So we are just going to assume that user is going to go and set correct data. We'll collect it and we will show it. So what is it that I need to do now? I need to declare uh, employee class object over here. So I'll declare emp1 equal to let's say null initially and then as and when the window one constructor gets called I will initialize this emp1 equal to new employee and then meanwhile what I do is using object initializer syntax I will initialize this name value to something. So let me initialize this to let's say Mahesh. So now employee has a name and then that name is Mahesh. So what is it that I wish to do? I wish to tell to this window one dot xaml based text box so let's say we'll collect only first text box so i need to tell this text box that please collect the text property which we have here please collect the text property from emp1 dot name how do i tell this option one that we have i can straight away go and say here txt name is going to consist of text which is going to be emp1 dot name but then this is completely kind of hard-coded assignment that we have. This will definitely showcase the data from employee's name to the text boxes. And then it can very well, maybe after we, let's say somebody changes the text boxes content to collect the change content, one can very well go and say emp.name equal to whatever contents are changed in txt name dot text, we will reassign it to employee one. And then ultimately employee class further can have some methods like maybe update the data in database or maybe delete the data in database or whatever. So all CRUD operations code with respect to employee, let's say we can have some methods written over here or we can have it some in some other class completely which can be called as data access layer class. Point to understand is this is some something which is tight coupling of text box and a name and then one more time collecting the data from specific text box and assigning it to a name. So instead of we doing all this, this is something which people have been doing since ages. But then what WPF differs here is using a concept called as binding. So what we can do, we can very well go and convey here that is this text box name needs to collect the data from and then I'll use here an API complete special syntax. So I'm going to say this text is going to be bound with a property which is called as path which is called as name. So I'm trying to specify that is I need a text to be bound with a property path means property called as name but then this name property comes from something which is called as employee one object how do i tell this option one again we have we can access this text box control here and we can say that the source of data for this text box is going to be emp1 now this seems simple as of now so i just conveyed the text box you should have your data source coming from emp1 which means any of the property in case of text box including height width text which accepts this kind of a kind of syntax which is called binding we can actually go and maybe get as many properties as we want and we can keep on binding property with respect to the text boxes property so text is a property getter setter of text box and i just said to text box let us go and assign yourself the value from a name getter setter and later on in the code behind i conveyed that is text box your data source is going to be emp1 now 
as and when even if i say here let's say the height of the text box is going to be some age of the customer if i say width of the customer or angle of the customer uh, angle of the text box is going to be let's say maybe age of the customer you will find out we can very well bind that render uh, rotate uh, angle which we saw earlier we can very well bind that rotation angle with respect to age property of a customer or employee so now let's do one thing let's try to see what happens here if i run it you will find out constructor gets called employee object gets created and then by default the text box gets the value which is called as mahesh over here so maybe what i should do is i should take this somewhere here this content so we have data coming from emp1 right now let me close this now one again this doesn't seem to be like you know doing something like you know great because earlier the syntax was more readable and understandable like text boxes text is equal to emp1 dot name but then barring that what is it that this binding syntax can do for me imagine a scene who is acting as a source right now emp1 is acting as a data source and who is acting as a target for presentation of a data is this text box so here is what i am going to do i am going to put in a message box something which is called as the presentation of data source and data target so i am going to put here string dot format and specify that source of the data is going to be so and so and the target is going to be so and so now i need to specify here the source of the data as we know who is providing a data is emp dot name and who is basically showing the data is txt name dot text so keep it in mind source and a target is what we are trying to print right now on a button click so let me run this so after we run initial value which it shows is going to be let's say mahesh which is here so if i click on the button it shows me source is mahesh that is emp1 dot name is mahesh and target that is text boxes text is also mahesh okay great what else now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change here a value to let's say uh, maybe abc now what is it that i have changed i change the target value and then one good point about wpf is if i click here you will find out i try to change target to abc but what gets changed is a source to abc which means nowhere on a button click i tried to say something like emp1 dot name is equal to txt name dot text i did not specify this anywhere at all and still you will find out just because of binding api you will find out we just because we have specified this as data context and just because we specified this as so called the property with respect to binding api you will find out what wpf does any property change in the ui if it is bound with some sort of element or entity's property you will find out it immediately goes and tries to change into the source property which means it's easy to collect the data from the ui to the source automatically will this work something like if i change emp1 dot name and then i'll change it to let's say xyz here so what i'm trying to do on a button click initial value of a name is mahesh i'm trying to change it to xyz so ultimately i'm trying to change the source here what if i change the source will it change the target automatically because you have seen the reverse just now so if i run this so as of now the value is mahesh and if i just go and try to click here what it shows you is source changed to xyz but target is still mahesh one more time we'll try to click source is changed to xyz and target is equal to still mahesh which means reverse is not working now why is this is not working why the earlier case was working so we will get answers to all of it once we start understanding the binding api before we proceed what i also want you to do is we can just take one more property here something like integer and let's take age as in property here and then we can always have some sort of property building like this one can very well go and maybe write down maybe syntax like this or one can very well go and write down a full property syntax like this 
So full property syntax, integer age and age is a property. So what I wish to do is just like I assign name Mahesh, I will assign age as in 40. And then just like we specified text boxes, text box one data context is so and so. I'll also mention text box two, that is text box age data context is also going to be EMP1. And here in the text box age, I will specify that is please collect your text value from the property something which is called as age. So I just have specific, I have just specified binding here that is text property of a text box is bound with age property of something. And then in the code behind, I just have mentioned that it's a data context is going to be EMP1 and data context is going to be EMP1. Why can't I just specify data context just like I can specify text in the code itself just like this. Why can't I specify data context in here itself? Like I can specify some, what if I can specify data context equal to EMP1? Unfortunately, EMP1, we never declared it within the XAML. We always declared and define it, you can say, in the code behind. And that's the reason what we did is we mentioned here that is uh, data text boxes data context is going to be EMP1 in the code behind. Is there any way that we can define this entire employee in the XAML itself? So there is a way. We will see that in a short while. So let me run this application first. Now observe, we have Mahesh here written. So as and when I click here, it says target is Mahesh and source is Mahesh. If I change this to ABC, what it does is it quickly can tell me your target is changed to your source also automatically changes. So it's one way towards source kind of you can say binding, which is default one. One way towards source in the sense, if I change the target, the source automatically changes in case of WPF. Source should be any kind of a class or entity which has got some properties which are bound with the UI elements. Okay, same thing which is applicable to the age as well in this case. But then instead of age, what I'm going to do is I am going to show you something different. So what if I put up here 30? So if I put up 30, what will happen is obviously this 30, which is a string right now, will be converted automatically into integer and will be assigned to the age property of employee. So earlier it was 40, now it has changed to 30. But what will happen if I go and try to change something to wrong value over here? So it expects integer in double quote. It will convert it automatically. But what if I put up wrong as in text character over here? If I just go and before I click, you will notice the text box actually gets a border which is red border. I have not written a single line of code for this red border. So how exactly WPF brings this border into the picture? Now, in order to understand this concept, we have to understand another concept which is called as visual tree. So binding is going to one help us understand this visual tree as well. So what I'm going to do, in order to understand visual tree, we are going to understand first what is logical tree and then eventually what is virtual tree. So that will be in the next discussion.